Welcome. Welcome back. Random TV Review is your girl, and I. And it's your boy, Stan Lad. Love and Marriage, Huntsville. Before we get started good, I want to give a major shout out to the cast. They came over last week, showed us some major, major love yes. on our Instagram page. They said they love our commentary on the show. <laughs> we sure do appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, appreciate it shout much. Shout out to Carlos King, one of the producers on the show. Hey. Always giving me much Twitter love. And also, if you all have not checked out my sis, and I say my sis on YouTube, really, bitch, yeah. she does a really good recap on this show as well. So we'll go ahead and link her channel below. So once you finish watching us, go on over there, and, and it's really eh, but I say bitch, because I don't like the cuss. <laughs> but anyway, listen, 10th year anniversary of Bus. Yeah. I'm going to say this right off the, out the gate. Martel is becoming one of my least favorite cast members on this freaking show. And I didn't, I didn't see that happening. I thought Mar, let me get this boy's name right. And let me apologize. I'm Haitian. We don't say O's a lot. Yeah. Like O's don't really come out naturally. <laughs> so I've been saying myself, but his name is Mar So. Mar so yeah. And even that don't even sound right coming out of my mouth. But anyway, <laughs> I'm going to say it. Mar So. I thought it was going to be him that I would hate the most, but the more that we continue to go on, not that I excuse his behavior, but I understand some of the logic. Some of the dynamic of, that, yeah, that's happening right now. Yeah, why it goes on like this. Yeah. So we still have this thing where they're trying to do business, but Martel still does not want to disclose full transparency about how much him and Melody are going to make at the end of this deal. Mm -hmm. Now, I kind of have a better idea of how this is happening. Somebody in the comments help me out. But I'm still confused because you go into business with someone and you don't know what they're going to be charging you to build the homes. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, okay, we're still trying to work out how much per square foot, all of this good stuff. So they decided they were going to have a meeting and they were going to come up with this contract and everybody was going to you know, sign this contract mm -hmm. and in any business that the Holtz would do, um, that will kind of conflict or look similar to the business plans of what they're trying to do in Huntsville. You need to bring that back to us and yeah. we need to vote on it mm -hmm. because if we have an initiative going on, you can't have the same initiative going on under your umbrella as well, because they're going to conflict with what we're trying exactly. to do here. Exactly. I understand that. Exactly. Martel was like, oh, hold on, but what we're not going to do is disclose our full business plans to you all. In, in the hopes that we don't offend anybody or step on y'all toes or what. That's not, not what they were saying. What they were saying. And nah. I always and say this in life. Because they don't want no details. People that have nothing to hide, hide nothing. Exactly. Not to say you put everything on front street, but if we're in business together, why are you hiding certain things from me? Mm -hmm. Unless you are planning on doing something real shady at the end of it. Exactly. Martel is condescending. And now, for me to say that, and I haven't said that about my, my soul. What's happening to me? <laughs> what is really happening to me? He's oh. at the table and what's her name? I think I've been calling her Letitia because honestly, I've heard them say it two. Letitia. I've heard them say it two different ways on the show. So I've been gravitating to Letitia, but yeah. I've, I've heard them call her Letitia. So whichever one. He's calling her sweetheart, and you know when someone calls you sweetheart, they have just minimized. All of your ability. Well, at a business meeting. Yeah. They yeah. have minimized your ability to hold yourself in a business setting. They pay, they basically don't put you down to the help. Yeah. So we got a better understanding of kind of how this thing is working out. Not totally. Is that we know that Marsu and so, Maurice them are funding it. And, of course, we always knew Hawk and Hawk was going to be building the houses. So what we thinking is, is that, I guess... Marceau and them is going to benefit on the so, back end when Marceau, I mean Marceau, they're going to kill you in yeah. the comments. Marceau, <laughs> <laughs> that they going to, those, they going to benefit on the back end when the houses sell. But Martel them is going to benefit off of building the house. And then it sounds to me like even at the end too, to me. But I'm trying to figure out, know. yeah, how are you going to benefit when you ain't really putting up the, because they front off saying like they paying for all the cost of materials and all that kind of stuff, plus his labor, $20,000 that he trying to make off of it. Yeah. So. I don't know. But 
We're trying to get ready for this here wedding, and I'm ready too, because God daughter, my invitation ain't coming to Memphis. Yeah, I'm going to go to Miami too, man. They already married now, though. Yeah. <laughs> from what I gather. Um, we first see the dynamic of both of them having children before, you know, they get married to each other. So they're bringing in two, um, two boys. Yeah. And the dynamic is Kimmy's son is off to college. So, of course, that summer thing, come back home. And he trying to live his best life. And mama's like, no, no, no. Uh, you this, still got a curfew, bro. Yeah. <laughs> and if you don't want a curfew, then you can chip in on this. Mortgage. mortgage. Yeah. You choose. So then we they have. They don't make parents like that no more. Though. I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> they don't make a lot. So then you got Maurice's son, Monster. And he comes over for the summers as well. Mm -hmm. Now, we go over to couples counseling. And I love couples therapy. I ain't even going to try to yeah. lie to nobody. I think everybody should do it. It's I powerful. think you should do it within your marriage mm -hmm. to have a little checkups because you're forever changing. You're ever mm -hmm. evolving and you're forever getting on each other's nerves and your dynamics are just going to change. Exactly. But anywho, they went to couples therapy. And within couples therapy, I said, that God doing Kimmy is me 2.0. <laughs> I said, okay. Their dynamic is great. Mm -hmm. Both of them love each other's kids, and the kids seem to love each other. Yep. But the dynamic is, when those boys come home, that responsibility falls on Kimmy. Mm -hmm. Because Maurice is at a point in his life where he's doing the business, he's forever learning, he's going back to school, school. he's doing mm -hmm. this, he's doing this, so he's grinding. This is his grind moment. And yeah. like Kimmy said, I'm older than he is. Mm -hmm. So... She's gone out there. She's had a baby. She decided, well, she didn't decide. That's what she's supposed to do as a parent. Yeah. She decided that she was going to not do what everybody else did. And she was going to focus on taking care of her son, mm -hmm. getting, making that money, making ends meet, and bringing your tail home and being the best parent that you can be. And then later on, I'm going to be able to live my best life. Mm -hmm. But as life would have it. Life sometimes would just deal you cards Yeah. that you have no control over. So she was like, although I love his son being here for the summers, I still have not been able to live my life and catch up on some milestones and some things that I see other people my age doing. Mm -hmm. Back in the day, I used to see them in Paris and Hawaii living their best life. I'm at home and I'm taking care of my son doing what I'm supposed to do. So now that he's in college, okay, now it's That's my time turn. Going. And then no, because now that her fiance is in school, they really still can't do those things. Mm -hmm. And then Maurice wants to bring his son over to the home full time. And all of that responsibility is going to fall on her too. Exactly. And she basically was like, when is it going to be my turn hmm. to live the life that I have created for myself? Yeah. Honey, if you're not talking to me, I'm right here now. I'm 40 <laughs> and I have zero kids. Ask me how yeah. this is even possible for my life. And I think the powerful thing was is that Maurice didn't even know he that he was it. putting so much load on her because she been, I guess, displaying such being a strong, you know, black woman. I got this. So I guess she never ever said, hey, this is too much on me. But I guess she was like, I got to grind along with you. So I'll just take this on, even though I didn't have my life. And I'm not going to complain because I understand what we're trying to get to. But it comes to a point where you going to have to live your best life because you don't want to leave this earth not at least doing a smidget of what you want to do. So yeah. I, I understand. I, I was, she was, that, that was me too because you live your life always doing for everybody else and you put yourself on the back burner and that's what we said in 2019 we, do it. we ain't doing that bulls kid no more we can we gonna live our best life we got our plan together we got our goals together and we say by the end of 2020 man it's gonna be crazy up in here <laughs> uh, it sure is yeah because we trying to travel the world we trying to see some stuff man so for years, man, we did what everybody else wanted us to do. And catching everybody else's bull skit. And um, but I was telling her, I told I was telling the net, I was said the the flip side is that you may have to deal with some flat from people because you no longer do what they want you to do. And that's fine. And that we say gonna have to be fine because before it would stop us to be like, nah, we'll just do what, you know, keep peace. We'll just go ahead and do this and do that. But we can't do it no more because mm -mm. we suffering while they happy. Hmm. 
is that you? I really have nothing to say about that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm asking them. I was like, is that you? Yeah. But um, <laughs> in Kimmy's defense and in Maurice's defense, because I am that person, I am Kimmy. I am Kimmy in the flesh. Because we make life look so easy, yeah. and we transition into fix mode and to grind mode, mm -hmm. people don't ever really see what they're doing to you yeah. because you're just like this. Mm, you're like a freaking um, transformer. This happens. Yeah. Oh, Autobot fall back. You, yeah. you, you transform to whatever situation that life is bringing you, but no one ever sees how much you neglect yourself to do that. Or never stop to ask you how you really feel. Yeah. About or what can you I help you? Yeah. While I keep throwing this on you and you mm -hmm. got it, you make it look easy. Oh, yep. you, that, that's where you're good at. Mm -hmm. No one ever asks you, and you walk around with a, you smiling on the outside, but the inside you frowning. Yeah. So I got that thing. So she had a breakdown and Maurice gets it now. He gets yeah, he it. Was he like, was like, whoa. whoa, I didn't realize what I was doing. Mm -hmm. So that comes with full transparency as well. And that's the power of counseling because they give you a perspective that you never even thought about. Mm -hmm. A mm -hmm. person that don't give a fuck about neither one of y'all feelings mm -hmm. yep. will tell you the truth. And in the middle, somewhere y'all need to make a compromise. But we, we said it's before. Us black folk, we don't want to go to counseling. <laughs> we don't want to do it. I don't, I don't get it. I, I don't understand. But it's, it's, it, you it's got, better. Yeah, yeah, you got to do it. It's mostly men. It really is. Because females, we like to talk. We like to tell somebody. Because we like to get it up off of us. Men I, like to internalize I, that skit. I think with us, I think like TV shows and movies and stuff have put a bad taste in our mouth with counseling because most time when you see it counselors is bashing the man you need to do this you need to do that you ain't this you ain't that so most of the time even for us even before we get into counseling our ego and our pride been damaged mm. already so we ain't going to counseling going to counseling to further get damaged and tell what we are not because even the world always betray what we are not and what we should be doing and and this that and the other so we was like no nah, i'm not putting myself through that but from experience it's really not like that when you go to a, a correct counselor an experienced counselor they balance it yeah they knock her upside of here and they knock me upside of here and both of y'all leaving up out there with battle yeah. stars and y'all can't figure out how to fix and it and the most powerful thing they let you know what you're doing right because right. sometimes you be thinking that, hey, I got this wrong, that wrong. But like, no, nah, let's let's take a step back. You got more stuff you doing right than you doing wrong. Mm -hmm. We're giving y'all some knowledge today, man. I'm trying to tell you. Yeah. And at the end of 2000, what year are we in? 19? 2019. The year has gone by fast. Yeah. And at the end of 2018, I went to see a life coach. Because mm -hmm. I was like, there were just certain points in my life that I just felt stuck. I felt like Kimmy. Mm -hmm. I am Kimmy. Where... Life was just passing me by and I did not see an exit to do this and do that. A 40 year old, corporate America, we make great money mm -hmm. and we still could not figure out how to do some of the things that we wanted to do because we had so many Responsibility. outside responsibilities, responsibilities. Yeah. pulling on us. We don't have kids. I don't have kids by design mm -hmm. because I always wanted to have full control over the next phases of my life and I'm 40 and I still feel like I don't have it. And my life coach, blessed my life mm -hmm. and she was like let me tell you something my life didn't begin until i was 40. so don't ever yeah, think that was powerful yeah that you're like it's, life has passed you by it's like, never too late it's never too late like mm -hmm. i was just telling her i'm just beginning to travel internationally mm -hmm. do things and see things that i've seen other people do for years and i always feel like i'm at this disadvantage mm -hmm. because of the Cards that life had dealt me, some of the cards I picked up on my own, some of the cards were just threw on my table. They'll mm -hmm. do what you need to do with it. But at the same time, I'm like, God, when is it my turn? Mm -hmm. When is it going to be my turn? And she was like, Keep doing what you're doing. Yeah. Your turn is going to come. And not only is it going to come, you have to create and that's plan why I really say you got to make it happen. Turn. Yeah, you got to make she it said, happen. Because life will always occupy you. Yeah, if exactly. You don't create a space to occupy it and and one of the powerful things she told you too is that you have to learn how to say no no has to be a powerful word in your life no i can't do that yeah. no I, I can't do this no i can't go there no mm -hmm. Uh-uh. Yep. Sorry. Sorry. That's unfortunate. That's Sorry, my that's word. That's unfortunate. Yep. <laughs> Shall we say, oh, that's unfortunate. Sorry, that's unfortunate. You know, and if they get mad, 
then that's just them trying to control the narrative of your life. Yeah, so I can say, man, when you went to the counseling session, you've grown leaps and bounds, man. Yeah. You have grown. I've become more of an a-hole, though. I mean, you always going to be that. <laughs> But you just a grown up a hole right now. Yeah. Like I really give two bucks. <laughs> yeah. About my no. But I say right now we really feeling really good about life. I mean we always felt good about How life. How did this become about us? Yeah, I, I don't know. Cause it's power. <laughs> somebody somebody need this today. We we've always felt real good about ourselves, but we really feel we we feel like we have a sense of purpose now. Right. It's like our pur purpose before was to serve others. And to help others, but now we understand is that how in the hell is we gonna help somebody else when we ain't first helped ourselves? Boom. That's right there. That right there. That's that right. You can take that on home. And speaking of helping yourself, Melody and that guy doing Martel, how is it that you all have made it to 10 years and you do not celebrate it? Like I said, if you don't make time to occupy life, life will occupy uh, it you. for you. Yeah. And they didn't. They didn't plan anything for that 10th year. So Natisha and them were like, you know what, well, we just go ahead and plan this, this little thing and we're going to take them out on a night on the town. And they took them to this place called 360. We have one up in Northern Virginia here mm -hmm. where you go up. It's like a freaking spaceship. It spins around. Yeah, shows stratosphere you yeah. type of thing. And they thought that they were doing something. They picked them up in a limo and told them, oh, we're going to take you to 360. It's a nice place. Melody up in her confessional See, that's that bougie skit. Yeah, that, that's what they was talking about. That's yeah. that skit they talking about. Yeah. You have changed. Yeah. She's talking about some, oh, we, we we've went been there, there years months. ago. Yeah, you went there, but you never had nobody to sacrifice and pay their money to bring you there. So, the correct way to respond to that was, have you ever been there? Oh, yes, but you know what? I have been waiting for an opportunity to, to get go back, back there. there. Yep. Oh, my God. Now, I couldn't have imagine being here with anybody else other than my friend that's yep. how you spend that thing mm -hmm. not that oh we oh, just lied here. to them and yeah. told them sorry ah. that's that bougie skit they talking mm -hmm. about but they got there and then it became the <laughs> it became the Letitia and Marceau show <laughs> once again <laughs> and the more they argue I don't take up for Marceau because he he is he is yeah. who he is yeah and he he walks in he stands in his skit but at the same time Letitia has to, let me say this correctly because I don't want to seem like a chauvinist my God doing so. They had a plan. Yeah. They had a plan of the mm -hmm. direction that their life was going to go and what they were going to do. And now she wants to change that plan or really alter some things within that plan. And that's yeah. fine. She want to work in the company now. But at the same time, both of you all are going to have to come in an agreement to be like, you can okay. I'm getting antsy. I'm at mm -hmm. this house all day. I don't have any adult interaction, which happens with stay-at-home moms. Yeah. They start missing that adult interaction with other people. You know, they 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 need an outlet. I need this. So this is what we can do. Mm -hmm. This, this, that, and the third. I really think that if there was a, a solid plan going forward of how this would work, I don't think he'd have a problem with it. Yeah, I honestly no don't. Mm -hmm. Listen to how he is. Because he was like, if you want to go out there and make money, I can make more money uh, yeah. to make sure that the, and making sure that you have the household taken care of. Mm -hmm. I can make more money. But what she's saying is it's not about me going out there trying to make more money. She has something inside of her that she needs to fulfill. Exactly. So now y'all have to come into another plan to accommodate it's her that needs. That plan, yeah. So that she doesn't feel like she's just at home doing the wifely things. Yeah. And you're out there making money. She has to be incorporated in that as well. And I and I think with him too, I think probably him growing up with the way he acts, seeing other marriages failing, because you got both spouses out in the workforce grinding and stuff start getting neglected. The kids getting Martel. neglected, the house gets neglected. Yeah, for example. So I think And he's got a bird yeah, eye view. Yeah. That. So I think with him it's like, okay, if we have a plan, I go outside, you stay in, take all care of this stuff. Cause like you said, I don't want you to be barefoot and pregnant, walking around not doing what you want to do. But we need to plan it out to make sure that at the end of the day, it's We're gonna good. work out that our house life is going to be good as well as our outside house going to be good because i guess if she decided to go full force in the workforce something is going to be neglected there and they might end up being martell and mel <laughs> yeah and i really think that's what he's mostly afraid of now i think the, i think his delivery is what turns a lot of people off 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, his, the way he deliver it, you know, in a chauvinistic type of way. And it could be editing. Yeah. We know how this goes. Yeah, you gotta make it. Drama you gotta, yeah, you gotta, yeah. But I would still love, y'all need to let us know what that five-year plan is. If, if you can't do it on the show, go on and slide it in our email. Our email is in the bottom of the video. Let us know. We don't need to know the details, but give us a little bit of insight into it so we can come <laughs> back and speak it on the video so we can, you know, help y'all out, man. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, you know, Letitia decided she was gonna go around and be like, you know what? You all have survived 10 years. You know, y'all have come through a lot. And this was really her opportunity to stab at Martell, to and be honest with you. she did it too. She did it, and I wasn't even mad. <laughs> that was a passive-aggressive move, but I wasn't even mad at it. Because, so, you know, you all have overcome infidelity. And look right at Martell, uh -huh, like, uh -huh. <laughs> that was for that sweetheart comment. <laughs> that was for that. She got you. Checkmate. <laughs> She brought it up because she know it gets under your skin. And she knows that if she brings it up, Melody is going to follow suit right with it. Because she she takes every opportunity to dig at you about that. Mm. Yep. And another thing. So, you still... Going to the gym late at night. Turning up missing. Hmm. And they had the nerve so to bring her. Is that chick at the gym? He back into golf. At the golf? Yeah. Took her to golf with them. You should have took her to the gym like you said. And the first thing I said was, okay, so now he's saying, you know, she wants to account for my time, so I'm going to bring her with the fellas. No, no, no. Because the fellas can vouch for you that you were with them. She talking about that time where ain't nobody yeah, seen you. Exactly. That's the there's, time where she want to know where you at. There's no eyewitnesses. There yeah. is eyewitnesses, but not eyewitnesses that she knows that she can. And bounce, the, eye, yeah, and the eyes are looking up this way, probably. <laughs> yeah. But I want to say this right here real quick. Sure. And this, I think this is real powerful. Because sometimes we think that money answers all of our problems. And this show shows it that all of them are millionaires, successful, but they still have the same problems as a one that's broke, mm -hmm. middle class, or even rich. It doesn't matter. The problems still exist on all of the levels. Yeah. So I'm glad that they was willing to come out here and put their life out there. The show is that, hey, we, we paid. We got it good. We drive nice cars. We got nice houses. No, we, got some we, got, we got successful businesses, but we still got some problems in our life that we trying to work out. So we got nothing else. We got to put some respect on their name for that. Mm -hmm. man. Yeah, that's powerful. That's it. I appreciate it. So it really wasn't anything going on other than they were planning for the um the wedding. Mm -hmm. Kimmy was picking out some lingerie. Let, let me let me <laughs> as somebody that's been married for sixteen years. Woosah. Melody and Letitia. If y'all don't get y'all a subscription to Adam and Eve. Huh? Down there at the Priscilla McCall's. Over there at the Taboo. And do some strange things in that bedroom. I'm huh? trying to tell you. Huh? Y'all in here, y'all don't know what Kegel Balls is. Y'all don't know what the hell's going on. Kimmy over here talking about some. Kimmy said, I got four drawers full of lingerie. I keep my bedroom don't lie. But I thought she was, I thought she was ready to say I got four drawers of sex toys. I could say, God, it, it's don't, but it's, but it's, it's possible. It's probably one and a half. Yeah. You know. So if y'all don't learn nothing else, y'all better learn to turn into somebody else when that door closed. And if you got kids in the house, just turn the music on. Turn the TV up. Yeah. So that they don't think nobody in there trying to kill each other. That y'all in there fighting. They hearing lawnmowers going <laughs> on. All this. Just. Lord, that air fresh is the hell out of me. <laughs> going on up in here y'all seem so true i said y'all better do some strange things mm -hmm. for so no you, change so you better listen to kimmy and sometimes yeah. they, look sometimes they'll pay you afterwards uh-huh uh-huh straight from the va the dirty dirty south two up two down holla